It is possible that the reclusive Baron Archibald Dumas is somehow connected to the disappearance of Dr. Schenker. It will be up to you and Agent Goodman to establish the link, if it even exists. The first step is to meet the Baron in person and size him up. Whatever you do, don't blow your cover. Good morning, how may I help you? We've an appointment with Baron de Mont. I'm sorry, but are you sure it was today? The Baron usually reserves Mondays for golf. Tuesdays and Thursdays are for skeet shooting, Wednesdays for fishing, and Friday afternoons for backgammon. Sounds like a busy schedule. How does he find time for appointments? His Lordship reserves Friday mornings between 11 and 11.15 a.m. for business matters. Well, I'm positive today was the day. Could you take another look at the appointment book? I suppose, but I can't see that it will do any good. The Baron's routine is quite established. Would you excuse me for a moment? That should keep her busy for about ten minutes, poor lass. All right, wait here just in case. I'll find the Baron's office and see if I can dig up some incriminating evidence. I've got a better idea. You wait here and I'll snoop around. No way, sugar pie. Remember what happened last time? Heads or tails? Tails. Heads, you lose. Sugar pie. Two out of three? Don't be a sore loser. Fine, but stay sharp. If you're seen, the mission's blown. If the Baron figures out you're in his office, the mission's blown. If you hurt anybody... The mission's blown, I know. Just remember what I said. I'm not sure I agree with your conclusions. Why not? Where are your myths? I'm not sure I agree with your conclusion. Did you see what she did with her hair? It's horrid. <laughs> I know. Short is fun.
support code. You look very nice today. Good, good. You look very nice today. Thank you, Mr. Hill. I'll be in my office if anybody calls for me. Yes, of implementing safety regulations if no one abides by them. After three safety training courses in the past two months, you'd expect to see some decline in serious on-site accidents.
You like the Beatles? Sure. I wish they'd go on tour again. Don't hold your breath. Well, as long as they keep making records, I'm happy. <laughs> Any luck? Plenty. Do you trust me now? Nope. Now then, let's see if um we can't sort this confusion out, shall we? That's all right. Perhaps we can reschedule at a more convenient time. Certainly. How about Friday at 11 a.m.? Perfect. See you then. I want to take a look around in there. Good idea, but it's my turn. Heads or tails? Uh-uh. You got to go last time. Heads or tails? I'm going, you're staying. No arguments, no coin toss. Don't be such a Jesse. Heads or tails? Heads. Tails. You lose. Again. I'm in charge here. I give the orders, you take the orders. Well, now that we've decided who's going in, what are your orders, sir? All right. I'll help you get inside, but you'd better be careful. If anyone sees you, liquidate him before we can set off an alarm. And stay clear of security cameras. Don't worry. Photograph anything that looks suspicious and collect as much intelligence as you can. Files, correspondence, dossiers, anything. Aye, aye, sir. Excellent orders, sir. I look forward to following them. Mmm. Give me a few seconds, Head Start.
I want to take a look. I want to take a look around.
something about this museum. Society. Oh, I saw.
my mother-in-law's coming into town this weekend. You don't get along with her? She hates me. Actually, it's mutual. How long is she here for? A month. Oh, God! I'm scared of what I'm going to do. I guess your wife would probably be upset if you threw her in front of a train. Yes, I thought about it, but I think it would just create a lot of tension. Even if she couldn't prove it was me, she'd always want to it. So, what's your plan? Be a man about it. Life's all about lessons. I guess I just need to learn how to put up with my mother-in-law without killing her. That's philosophical of you. Hello, what have we here? Sergeant Magnus Armstrong. Well, well. It was Armstrong, all right. I'm sure of it. Excellent work, Archer. What do you want us to do now? Try to interview the Baron at his estate. We need to know if he's involved. You think it might be someone within the organization? I'm hoping that you and Goodman can answer that question. Aye, sir. We'll do our best. Let's go. Tails. Heads. Damn it! Ah, oh, don't pout. Your eyes get all small and piggy when you're sulking. How are you planning on getting in there anyway? I'll charm my way in. Well, I hope you brought some secret charm powder or something, otherwise you're in big trouble. I've got better weapons in mind. Like what? You've been staring at them all afternoon. Huh? 
Huh? How do you like to be swept off your feet? Yes? Good afternoon. My name is Mia Hegg. I'm from Men of Influence magazine. Men of Influence? What on earth are you doing here? This is the residence of Baron Archibald Dumas, is it not? Yes. Baron Dumas certainly seems to qualify as a man of influence, wouldn't you say? I suppose it would depend on how you choose to define influence. He is the president of Dumas Industrial Enterprises. Ah. He's wealthy. True. He's well respected. Hmm. He's dashing. <coughs> He's debonair. Listen, this is all very educational, but what exactly do you want? I'd like to interview the Baron about the future of Dumas Industrial Enterprises. Our readers love stories about savvy businessmen conquering corporate challenges in our modern age. Ah, yes. Sadly, the Baron does not disclose information regarding his business to anyone, even attractive young females such as yourself. So sorry. I was hoping to profile Baron Dumas for our perfect live series. Each month we cover a different person whose lifestyle and disposition exemplify perfect living. And you wish to include his lordship in this... series? Yes. The idea is to penetrate the myth and get to know the man. His pastimes, his ambitions, his accomplishments, the things that make him tick. I see. He's a model aristocrat. Ah! Someone our readers can look up to. Of course. Will you excuse me for a moment, Miss Haig? I don't think I could forgive myself if I were to let this sublime opportunity pass by. I will discuss your request with his lordship and return presently with his answer. Thank you. Please, wait here. I shan't be a moment. Very well. His Lordship has agreed to see you. Excellent. This should be amusing. What do you mean? Nothing. Follow me, please. Miss Haig, sir. Splendid. Show her in. I'll leave you to your interview, darling. I'll be shopping for the rest of the afternoon. Yes, yes. Have a marvelous time, Chipmunk. Don't call me that. As you wish, my love. Pip pip. He's rather larger than I expected. Ah, yes. He's a big bundle of charisma and intelligence. If you're lucky, perhaps he'll regale you with his rousing safari adventures. Good day, Baron Dumont. Goodness, had I known you would be so sumptuous, I might have preened. Care for a drink? No, thank you. It's a little early for me. Well, I'll indulge for us both in that case. I hope you'll pardon me for saying so, but you're a ravishing girl. Simply ravishing. That's very kind of you. I'm sure your wife feels absolutely spoiled by your abundant charm. Oh, she's a lucky old crow, I'll grant you that. Now then, Giles tells me you want to profile me for this magazine of yours. Men of Influence, was it? Yes. Each issue we cover a different person in our Perfect Live series. Someone whose lifestyle and achievements serve as inspiration for our readers. Jolly good. You've come to the right place. That will be all, Giles. Actually, sir, I thought it might be worthwhile for me to stay. In case the young lady should desire... anything at all. Splendid idea. Pip-pip. Yes, sir. I'll be right over here if you require anything, Miss Haig. Thank you. Baron Dumont, do you mind if I record our interview? I'd rather devote my attention to you than to my notepad. And who could blame you? 
Record away, my dear. Uh, so then, where shall we begin? What's it like being such a prestigious big game hunter? Well, it's difficult to explain to someone who's never experienced the thrill of a hunt, you see. When it's you and your trusty blunderbuss all alone against a ferocious beast, you discover exactly what sort of stuff you're made of. Sounds ghastly. Oh, it takes a special breed of male, I'll grant you that. The merest hesitation could cost you a leg. Many men with such immense wealth succumb to sloth or immoderation. How do you keep yourself productive and effectual in the face of such constant temptation? <coughs> Excuse me. Ah, an ingenious question. Well, you see, a man has certain choices he can make. Some choices are wise ones and some are not. So, I suppose you could say that making wise choices is an important step in one's tireless quest for uh, wisdom. I'm sure our loyal readers would love to know what hunting rifle such a magnificent sportsman favors on safari. Ah, yes, indeed. Well, it depends to some degree on the beast I'm tracking. For a tiger, I tend to favor the legendary Matterhorn Model 4 Special Issue. Isn't that a 22 caliber target rifle? Uh... Seems a bit feeble for a tiger. Yes, but I savor a challenge. How intrepid! You must be quite a marksman to take down a tiger with a single round from a 22. Well, sometimes it takes a few more than that. Still, even three rounds is impressive. It's usually more like 17 or 18. Really? You might find a larger caliber to be more humane. Yes, but then you have to deal with all that nasty recoil. I see. the most dangerous animal you ever faced? I once squared off against a silverback gorilla. A silverback gorilla? Yes, a huge, ferocious, man-eating beast. Man-eating? Quite so. But I was under the impression that gorillas were herbivores and very gentle and less threatened. Well, that's true of some gorillas, but this was uh, one of the dreaded man-eating gorillas of Pakistan. I wasn't aware there were gorillas in Pakistan. Well, that's because few lived to tell of them, you see. Well, it's fortunate that you did. Agreed. Silverbacks are by far the most dangerous animals to hunt. I was under the impression that that distinction went to Cape Buffalo. Nonsense. Cape Buffalo are just glorified cows. Hmm. Is there anything that can strike fear into the heart of such a stalwart hunter as yourself? Frankly, no. Really? Nothing at all? Not that I can think of. Not even centipedes? Oh, dreadful things. Uh, yes, I suppose, perhaps centipedes. Personally, I'm terrified of rats. Oh, God, yes. Those beady, evil little eyes and sharp little vermin teeth. Horrible animals, especially in a mob. And spiders. Oh, don't even mention them. How did you become so courageous? Oh, just something one's born with, I suppose.
I imagine you've traveled to many exotic locales across the globe in your many daring adventures. Is there any place you favor above all others for hunting? Ah, most certainly. Let me guess. Kenya. Oh, goodness, no. I don't speak a word of Chinese. But Kenya's in Africa. Oh, I thought you were referring to the one in China. All right, then. How about Bengal? Cold weather doesn't agree with me. Rhodesia? Heavens. Madagascar? Not on your life. Where, then? Well, to be perfectly honest, I'm quite fond of Bristol. Partridge? Yeah, pandas. Giant pandas. Bristol, England? Yes, indeed. I wasn't aware of any giant pandas in Bristol. Well, they're important. I see. How has your approach to running Dumas Industrial Enterprises differed from your late father's? I'm not really sure what approach my father used, but I like to run things strictly by the book. By the book? Yes, you know, according to policy. But whose policies? I'm afraid that information is strictly classified. Next. Is there a message you'd like to share with your many admirers? Good hunting, my humble devotees. Well, that's all the questions I prepared. I must confess, I'm positive this will be our most popular Perfect Lives installment yet. Oh, you think so? Absolutely. Rarely does nature combine so many excellent qualities in one man. Our readers will be fascinated and maybe even a bit envious. One can hardly blame them. What I don't understand is where such a busy man finds the time to be a successful business tycoon, loving husband, daring hunter, astute philosopher, cultivated humorist, etc. Aren't you overwhelmed? Well, one learns to delegate. For example, although you wouldn't guess it, I'm only peripherally involved with Dumas Enterprises these days. Strictly in an advisory capacity, you see, to keep the company on track. How ingenious. Oh, well, I have my moments. But isn't it an awful risk to hand over operations to someone less accomplished in the subtleties of enterprise than yourself? Actually, it's safer that way. Really? Yes, you see, in my experience, the less one knows about running a business, the less he can screw up. I make all the important decisions. The rest is just, you know, paperwork. Still, you wouldn't want your competitors getting their hands on that paperwork. Oh, quite true. But we have a very large safe in which to store it. Safes can be cracked. No, not this one. Even if someone could get inside, he'd still have to get past the security system. Sounds daunting. Oh, it is. There are invisible beams. Infrared? Exactly! If you touch one of them, the door's locked and poison gas is released into the safe. How terrible. Oh, I'd like to meet the burglar who could get in there. It would take a lunatic even to attempt it. Or a fool. Thank you for your time, Baron de Maul. It's been an eye-opening experience. I'm happy to oblige. Uh, never turn your back on a worthy cause, I always say. A worthy meal is more like it. <laughs> <laughs>